Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, just watch out for just like five minutes. time in two and a half, three years. This will be the first one since our grade 11s were in grade, we're moving to grade nine. Um, and so it's so nice to have you back. So welcome. Welcome to Chinook High School. And uh, for those of you, uh, uh, apologies for the changes in venue twice. Um, we were originally going to be in here and then uh, we thought we had our spring concert in here tonight and there's a little bit of a scheduling conflict, but unfortunately they had to postpone because we had too many kids sick. Um, and so they didn't want to run the concert tonight. So we're fortunate enough to be back in here, which is a little bit more comfortable for everybody while we're uh, here rather than the gym. The gym's a little bit harder to hear. It's exciting, but it's uh, a little bit harder to hear. And so welcome. And it's, thank you so many, so many of you for coming out. It's so nice to see you um, here at Chinook High School. Before we begin, I just do want to acknowledge that we uh, are meeting tonight and we learn every day on Seven territory, and, and we're honored to be able to do that and, and live and learn alongside them. So, uh, and the, the indigenous people who uh, have been here for so long. So, we always uh, do try to acknowledge that as well. Welcome to Chinook. Show of hands, clap, whatever. How many of you are brand new parents to Chinook? This is going to be your first child, or the, if those of you in grade nine coming in next year, first first time you you've been here. All right, and see, those of you returners, and see if you can be louder than them. Anyone, returning, this is not your first day. Yeah, okay, welcome folks, come on in. There's lots of places to seat up front. I will warn you, not warn you, I guess warn you, we are live streaming this too, so the camera's at the back and it is a live mic, so if you're sitting close to the camera in particular, it might pick up your conversation, so uh, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, think about what you're saying, I don't know what to say. Um, and those of you who are it is uh, YouTube and there's always a delay so we won't be able to take any live questions or, or anything from from anyone out in YouTube lab but please feel free to make sure you email the school call the front desk and be glad to answer any questions for tonight we're not going to keep you terribly long it's going to be about an hour um, and that's just nice because I hear it's getting colder overnight and even into tomorrow and hopefully for next uh, for next um, week when we're off it might be a little bit nicer for all of you guys that are off too so um our uh, our agenda tonight i know this is not the, the easiest to read because we wanted to get the uh picture in there um the picture in the background you're gonna see lots of pictures we tried to get as many of the new pictures in there when we were looking at this presentation from three years ago it's like yeah those kids are all graduated now <laughs> uh, so there's still a few of those pictures because we don't have everything yet from the last couple years, but uh, these are our grade nines this year um, coming into the school, so waiting for their sort of first agenda. Uh, so a little bit about Chinook, about that transition into grade nine. How do we help our students manage that? How do we how do we learn and grow together through that? Uh, we're gonna look at other opportunities in the school as well, so co-curricular, athletics, fine arts. Um, our programs, talked a little bit about our programs, and then the last two slides, I, I would say, and the reason we put these, these last, is um, we want to talk to everybody about our support mechanisms in, in Chinook, because we do believe that everybody's going to need some support at some time, whatever that looks like. Um, and then a little bit of a conversation and, uh, about high school and how it's different, maybe certainly different than when I went to high school. It's different than when I started high school, um, over, or started teaching in high school over 22 years ago. Um, 
Um, and then uh, we'll have some opportunity, we'll have some of our current students here who are uh, wanting to give a tour of the school and we'll introduce that right at the end. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Bill Forster. I'm a principal of Chinook. This is my first year as principal here, but this is my sixth year at the school. Um, I've had my own son go through here and graduate. Um, it seems like just not that long ago, except now he's graduating university. It goes fast. And I think that's for those of you who are coming into grade nine, it seems like it's going to be a long time. It will be the blink of an eye. And parents, it's even going to be shorter for you. I know it doesn't seem like that now, but it's going to go so fast. So one of the reasons we want to do this tonight is to, to help you understand the school a little bit, make some decisions around really getting involved and making these great years. Um, also tonight joining me, and, and we'll introduce people as they as they uh, come up and speak to you, uh, Dwayne Piper, one of our assistant principals, is here. Unfortunately, our other assistant principal staff are either ill or they had uh, classes or something like that because they're working on their master's, so they couldn't be with us tonight. But we also have uh, our one of our learning sport teachers, Dave Orr, in the back there, who's going to... Uh, help out and talk talk about a few things at near the end of the presentation and Rebecca Hutchins who is our teacher counselor and she's also going to uh, help out with this presentation and talk about a few things we're not going to get into a lot of specific details we're going to give you a little flavor for it we're going to talk about grade nines how what we're going to do when we get into that transition piece about how we're going to get even more used to the to the school a little bit about Chinook High School so if you don't know about 1,130 students this year. Um, it, it was, we're actually down a little bit from what our max was, even in my time here, and that's because of the, the boundaries got changed, um, and LCI picked up some of the students on the west side. So we're, we're down last year, this, or our current year, down next year a little bit, but we are expecting to go back up and hit, hit that 1,200 mark probably relatively soon with growth on the west side. So uh, just so you know, it's still a big school, right? Um, interestingly enough, for a high school, for a, we're a 4 a high school, which is sort of the biggest competition, that's by sports competition ranking in the province, we're a very small 4 a high school. Um, some of the big ones in Edmonton and Calgary are 23, 2,500 um, students. So yeah, comparatively, but it's still a really big school for some people, for sure. About 95 educational assistants are support in the office, uh, custodial support um, so there's lots of faculty but the students we always say this like if you little bit of close math if we say hundred and twelve hundred so if we have twelve hundred students and hundred staff you got us at a twelve to one ratio you're out number us we'll talk about how we how we sort of look at that later but uh, that's something to think about Talk about our advisor uh, period in a minute, but our bell times, just so you might have heard, are changing again next year. We They were the same for so long, and then this year they changed based on partly on the on the rezoning and redesign, and now they're changing again next year, going back a little bit closer what they were with the exception of Fridays. So our bell times are 8.05 in the morning, so that would be our first bell next year. We are done at 2.50 p.m. in the afternoon. Fridays are still early, but it's at 12.30 on Friday, so it's a little bit later than it was two years ago, and, and even this year it's a little bit later on Fridays. Um, so what that looks like is we have four periods a day, plus our flex blocks and then our advisor block. Um, and we can, you know, once again, once we do presentations for the grade nine, we'll get into some detail, but just to give you a feel for that, that means Monday to Thursday, four blocks a day. In the middle of the day, and we'll talk about this later, I'm gonna leave some of the details here, we have what's called flex time. There's two flex periods, which are gonna be about 35 minutes long. Those are times to eat lunch, for sure. Those are time for some clubs, for sure. That's also time that, that students can access their teachers for extra help. You're gonna hear us say that a lot. Grade nines need to learn to use that, and we'll help them do that a little bit, but that's one of the journeys that they'll go on here is, is they need to use that flex time a little bit. And that's a little bit hard coming from middle school when you have a, don't have a lot of, of, of independence. And that's one of the things that we work with our students on and sometimes they struggle with a little bit. So something to think about how you're gonna manage that into next year. Our advisor system, again, we'll talk about that in a minute, but every student that we introduce you to, even when you come on your tour, students near the in June, you'll meet your advisor. And that's a teacher that's with you for the four years. You may not have them as a teacher in a class, but they will help you, and they're a person you can go to to ask questions, help with registration, um, just someone that's consistent point of contact for you and for parents for you. Um, if you don't know who to ask something to, that advisor. If it's a specific class question, 
And you know the teacher, go to the teacher in the class because that's where the advisor would point you to anyway. But that advisor is a really good point person. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, busing. Always questions about busing and now particularly that the boundaries have changed. So here's the rules for busing. 2.4 kilometers. If you live within 2.4 kilometers of the school, you don't get busing. You're expected to, to walk or transport yourself. Um, and But it's a weird 2.4 kilometers. And here's the thing, is everyone always goes out in their car with Google and measures 2.4 kilometers. 2.4 kilometers as measured on paved, clear walking paths. And if you don't know where all those are, that's where it gets tricky. So if you ever have any questions about what Um, it's it's 2.4 is quite a large boundary and that's actually changed a little bit speaking of school boundaries and, and some of you might not live in our pool of current school boundaries basically our boundaries for the west side are everywhere north of if you're in Riverstone most of Sunridge um, Paradise those are all within the boundaries of LCI and you will be bus to LCI from there now that doesn't mean you can't come here, but you would be an out of boundary student, which means you probably won't get transportation. So you'd have to transport yourself. Here you all have to apply as an out of boundary student, and we might have a waiting list depending on our numbers, right? You'd be an out of boundary, and of course we try to accommodate you. Now there are some legacy um, clauses in there because it was just done last year. If your sibling already goes here, um, we absolutely do our best to get you in here. And there might be, that's where there might be busing for a couple more years for those legacy siblings, right? And if you need details on that, we can certainly provide you with that, but just to let you know that. The last part here is really important because, and you're going to hear probably someone say this again and again and again over the next four years, students and parents, you certainly know. Every decision we make here is for the social, emotional, physical, spiritual, and actual growth of our, intellectual growth of our students. And that's both staff and students, okay? That's how we deal things. It's about growth. Every decision we want to make for growth, and there's some other pieces in there you can see later as well. And we do believe our graduates are entrepreneurial, ethical, and engaged citizens, and we, and we work with them. We really do believe in, it's not just about marks, it's not just about classes, it's not just about getting through to go somewhere else. It's about how we go. And uh, we really do try to work with, with everyone and our students while we're here for the four years that they're here. All right, next point, please. So that transition I was talking about, this is what everyone's always worried about. This is, a, and especially for, for a lot of students over the last couple of years, hadn't been able to be here and even get a physical look at the building because of COVID. You know, it's so different now. You guys are lucky, you get that. We, we get to do our, our transition plan with you. Um, and it's a team effort. And it's a team effort with staff, students, parents. We try to make sure our communication is very clear. Your current school now, we have some things set up to make that transition as seamless as possible, but it's not going to be seamless. It never is. Every transition is a difficult transition. It's a different place. There's, we operate in a different way from middle school. And you're in a weird year where grade nine is kind of, you're in a high school with high school students. curriculum yet. So grade nine is that transition year. We really look at it that way. Um, so things we have, obviously teachers are, are well versed in this. Um, we have that advisor program that we were talking about and they're a big part of, especially those first few days that you come, your advisor, you'll get to know them first. They're a big part of that transition. So we hook you up with your advisor right away. Parents, we do have a website, very active website and Twitter. Um, and there's an Instagram page now, students uh, leadership runs. So there's a lot of place for information you'll often hear say go to our website first that's where a lot of information is um, we do have a communication week where we actually add teachers to reach out and then of course our, our conferences with parents students twice a year are all part of that the transition plan um, really starts with registration and parents this is the piece so for you um, hopefully you already received this document for registration right hopefully you've already received that um, if you have there's registration, there's the, have you made sure you got the form signed, all that the demographics and we know where you live and who to contact. And that's, that's the one that you should have received 
an email link for. And that's no different than anywhere else in the city for all the schools that have gone that digital now. There's also the, where do I pick classes? And classes are picked, students, a little bit differently for grade nine because you don't have a lot of choice in your core courses. What you do have is um, choice in your electives. And uh, we, when we come out and do our visits, and we do our visits in May um, and April, and we are visiting at Senator Joyce Fairbairn at the end of April, so the week right after we get back from the, um, from the break, on April 27th. Thank you, 27th. Um, and the, we're going to Lakey on May 3rd. Yes. <laughs> Dwayne and I were just discussing this beforehand. Okay. Um, so that's when you'll actually will go through the registration piece and that's and students you'll actually go online with PowerSchool and that's where you'll register for your courses there. So I can say between now and then make sure you get your PowerSchool and you know how to log on to your PowerSchool and that will be you'll select your elective courses. And uh, we'll talk about programming in a while and we'll tell you how to select how many electives and stuff like that. So I'm going to hand it over to Dwayne and Dwayne's going to talk a little bit more about Advisor and then uh, you'll see that thing Creative Design and Dwayne's been heavily involved in that so he's going to talk about that. Hey folks, uh, my name is Dwayne, I'm one of the vice principals here, and uh, that last slide was my slide, Bill scooped it. He <laughs> just kept talking, he got on a roll. Um, mine, mine, it, it was filled with jokes, some audience participation, a little bit of stand-up comedy, we're going to do the wave, it was the whole thing, but that's behind us now. Uh, we're moving on, so uh, yeah, that creative design class, I really wanted to talk about that. And the reason why I wanted to talk specifically about the grade nine transition is because uh, it's really near and dear to my heart. Uh, my son is in grade nine right now at Chinook High School, and his transition here was, it was fantastic. It was really wonderful. Uh, he didn't have a great experience in middle school, and then he came here and has been really, really doing well. And I think it's because of some of the things we do here at this school. So if you are a student in grade eight right now, I really want you to think about this. And parents too, um, think of it as a team, okay? And it's always been a team, but in elementary and in middle school, maybe the other people in the team played a bigger part, right? Parents, guardians, older siblings, but this transition into high school, it's really a, it's a, it's a cool time because you're transitioning from being a child to being a young adult. And that's what these four years are all about because from the time you set foot in here and get clapped in to across that stage and you get your diploma, um, that's, there's, it's a big transition time. And you, as the student, are gonna be leading this team. Okay, that's what we gotta get you ready for. So you gotta take some ownership and, and step up and yeah, give your parents a little bit of a break because they've been doing a lot of work to get you to this point and now you're gonna slowly start to transition, okay? And that's, that's what this is about. Um, that creative design class. Uh, myself, Billy Baum, and Amanda Sequira came up with this class four years ago here at Chinook and it's really an induction into how we think here at this school because it's not always traditional, the models of learning that happen in this building. And so this class, it actually doesn't have a mark. You pass it or you don't. And during this, we really learn about how we learn. It's meta, okay? Uh, we think about uh, how we think and learn creatively, critically, and collaboratively. And when we put all that together, at the end of the class, you get to pick something you're passionate about and use that as a project to affect positive change in your community, in this school, in this town, in this province, in this country, in this world. So it's a really fantastic class. And once you have that orientation as to how we learn and grow here together, it's beautiful because then you go into your math class and you look at it a little differently because you know better who you are as a learner. And then your other teachers will engage that as well. Because I taught it that first year, haven't taught it since because we rotate the different teachers through teaching creative design. So we'll have a math teacher and a fine arts teacher and a CTS teacher teaching it, and then it changes. So all of our staff, almost at this point, have taught creative design. Super, super cool. All right, uh, Bill, next slide. The other thing I really like talking about is connection, okay? Because you have four years here at this school. 
use it. Get connected. Have fun. Because if you assume that you're going to come to the school and have a bad time, that's what's going to happen. If you come here and you're open to actually connecting and thinking, yeah, no, this school's going to be pretty good, then it's going to happen. One way or the other, whatever your mindset is, that's what's going to happen. And here's a question for you. Yes, you have four years here, but how many school days does that translate to? Students, shout out. How many school days do you think that is that you will be a student here at Chinook High School? A lot, okay, a lot. Well, I did some math, and I'm a fine arts teacher, but uh, still, I can do that. 728 days. 728 days. That's actually not a lot of days. And I'll tell you one thing, if you engage and connect, at the end of it all, you'll have a lot of memories, you'll have connections, friendships, your time here will have been well spent. And if you choose not to connect with anything else, that 728 days, it'll still happen, one way or the other. You're holding all those grains of sand in your hand, every day one will slip out. And when you walk across that stage, the time will be done, and hopefully you will have connected with some athletics, with some clubs, with some fine arts. Uh, we have badminton, baseball, basketball, cross country, curling, football, golf, rugby. I just had one of my advisees graduate and got a full ride scholarship to an NCAA school in the States with a golf scholarship. And she did her golf program. Very cool. Curling, rugby, slow pitch, track, volleyball, wrestling. We have all the sports you want to do. So I would suggest maybe connect there. Um, we have clubs too. We have so many clubs. And I think that's a real indicator of a healthy school because we have so many clubs. And behind every club is a staff member that cares and wants to connect. So connect with them. Right now we've got less because of COVID going on. But we've got a book club, creative writing, Cerebus, which is our robotics club. Uh, in 2019, the last year they were able, they went to Texas for the World Championships of Robotics. So cool. Uh, we have a chess club, cosplay. Uh, we have a culture club, uh, not Boy George, for people my age or older. Um, but a, a, a club that celebrates all the cultures of the world. Uh, my favorite club, the Drink Tea and Make Stuff or Whatever Club. Once a week they get together and they drink tea and they make stuff or whatever. They talk, hang out, it's a blast. Um, we have a Dungeons and Dragons club, a bunny club, I, okay. Um, we have a soccer club and this is a great story because we had some kids come to me in the fall and said, hey, we don't have any soccer here. And I'm like, so started. And they were like, whoa, we can do that? And I said, yes, yes, let's do that. So they started up a soccer club, and now Chinook FC is a thing, and they meet twice a week, and they play soccer. And we're looking at expanding it to their high school. So if you have a passion, this is high school, just start it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, we have a grad committee, we have an interact, which is high school rotary. We have a Magic the Gathering, a Queer Straight Alliance, a role-playing club, the Wild Yotes, and a yearbook club. We have all kinds of things. So, there's no excuse. If there's some, not something for you, make it. And there's almost 1,200 students. There'll be other people who want to connect, and you'll make friends, and it'll be beautiful. So, one more thing. I haven't talked about it yet, and it's the final. You're in our theater. It's one of the most technologically advanced high school theaters in the province, if not the best. And uh, we have all kinds of fine arts here, but that's actually a part of our programming, which is baked right into the curriculum. Um, for those of you who like musicals, we have a class, and it's got 70 people in it. And next fall, they're putting on Mamma Mia. And it's going to be so good, you guys. So take, take musical theater. Take Rock. No, it's not. 
here my first staff year as a staff member. We uh, actually developed that very recently, that video, and uh, to, to promote the fine arts programming. classes um, and with the assistance of things like our tech theater class so even if you're not in the fine arts there's lots of ways to to get involved and in other things that are associated because here's what we believe and I'm going to talk about the programming we have excellent core programming here um, when you come here grade 9 you're not gonna have as much choice as you do in high school and we move farther you can understand that as you get into high school there's different levels of courses that get you to graduate Grade nine is still part of that K to nine curriculum. So your core courses, math, science, English, social, they're pretty much all the same, unless you happen to be in something like the knowledge and employability program, um, which the vast majority of people aren't. So it, it's that continuation of K to nine where everyone's kind of in the same class for their core courses. And everyone does phys ed and things like that. You do start to get to take some electives. Um, and that's where the, those CTS elective courses, CTS, Career Technology Studies, um, for those of you who don't know, you might. For those of you who are sort of old hats with, with high school, you recognize what that is. But that's things like, and in grade nine we have this as well, woodshop, foods, uh, video, photography, digital media, uh, computer programming we're starting now. Um, I'm missing some things. Foods, did I say foods? Um, we also have the fine arts classes, as we said before. You see these paintings up there. Raw, we have probably one of the largest fine arts programs um, south of Calgary um, and for the size of the school we do have the largest fine arts program rock and pop guitar concert band jazz band 
Um, and some of these things you get into as you get older, choir, musical theater, drama, technical theater. Dwayne, I hope I'm not missing anything. Um, I don't think I am. Dance, oh, I was missing dance, I knew I was missing something. And they all work together sometimes too, and that's, that's the beauty, and, and when you go on your tours, actually we had some students in the halls um, are practicing tonight, and we this moved because of one of our, our concerts, and then moved back because we had to postpone it. So make sure you get involved in that, and for those of you who are even really strong and really focused on academics, because here's what we know, students who are involved in athletics or fine arts do better. They're more connected to the school, but it actually, it helps your brain to have those interests. And those of you who might be looking to post-secondary, you can use those to get into post-secondary. It's not just something you're doing for fun or to get connected. Those are, people like there's academics and then those other courses. No, they're real courses. Those are just as important, if not more important sometimes. So don't look to the electives or options as, as we don't like calling them option, options, they're electives, you have to take some. And you'll get to take four next year. One of the things in grade nine we want you to, is to explore four different electives. And you'll do those in quarters. So for the first section of the year, from about September to, to November, you'll do one course. And then from November till end of January, you'll do another one. And then January to, to about this time, April, you'll do one and then one at the end of the year. And that's how we break up our electives a little bit different from middle school. And you'll get to know all of that. Once you get into high school, and I threw some of these very quickly, we. You can start looking forward to, and this is not for grade nine, things like we do have some dual credit courses with the university where you get university or college credit at the same time as you get high school credit. Work experience. In high school, you can get high school credits for working. You have to set it up and there's some regulations, but we recognize that as a huge part of learning and growing in Alberta, you can get those credits so you can start looking towards those kind of things. Rap, that is not rapping as in music, it would be great. Uh, it means registered apprenticeship program. You can actually, in high school, for those of you who are interested in the trades, and I would highly recommend investigating that, you can actually get your first year apprenticeship and up to 40 credits towards high school if you get into the RAP program. And those, those are more conversations for later, but just a little taste, parents, of things to think about as we move forward into high school. Um, we're moving on to support and inclusion. Hello, welcome, how are we doing? Good. We don't have anyone too scared yet, do we? No? Okay. So I, you are? <laughs> so I won't talk too much because my role here is counselor. Um, so I'm supposed to be a good listener, so they tell me. So uh, we actually have quite an amazing wellness center here at Chinook. So some of you guys from Lakey, Miss Colby? Anyone know amazing Miss Colby? Miss Melting Tallow? Yes! Yay! And then at SJF, Ms. Lomness, Ms. Kalu, right? All those amazing women. Well, we even have a bigger team here. So I'm the teacher counselor. And then we actually have, oh, I think he might have left. Oh, he's right back there. If you find a guy in a green sweater, give him a wave. He's at the back. That's Dan. He's one of our FSLCs. Um, another FSLC. We have two student support workers that work out of another room to just help support you in general, another space to work. Um, and then we also have a addictions counselor that works with us through AHS and uh, an indigenous grad coach. So there are a ton of us to support um, from everything from school stuff to home stuff, anything in between. Just reach out. All of our pictures and names are on the website. So parents, send us an email. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. Um, learning comments, pass it on today. Hey everyone, good to be with you today. Um, I wonder if you, do you have like two minutes for a quick story? All right, uh, so I used to be in middle school, long ago, uh, like grade five even. My middle school was, was grade four to grade seven. But in middle school, I uh, my mom would send me with lunches and she'd pack me with lunch and she'd make sandwiches for me sometimes. And she made homemade bread and if anybody here knows my mom, don't tell her that I'm telling this story. Sometimes she would put jam on the bread, and by lunch it would soak in. 
so you know that when that happens and it's soaked right into the bread and I, I couldn't eat it but in my middle school there was no throwing your food away the teachers would stand in front of the garbage cans and they'd watch and make sure that you did not throw any food in there and so what did I do well I had to either eat it or hide it so I hid it I hid my sandwiches I hid them all the time one time, though, I remember I got picked up from school in the blue station wagon. And I knew I had my sandwich still, and I was hiding it, and I didn't want to get in trouble. And so I opened the back of the station wagon, and I threw my stuff in there. And there was a little compartment, probably for, like, tools to change tires or something. And I quickly opened that and threw my sandwich in there, closed it up, and forgot about it for a while. And I kid you not, we would get in the car as a family and we would make jokes about the stench in that car. And every time it happened, I, I remember like my brother and I, we'd kind of like turn to our sister and be like, it's her, it's her, she smells. And uh, it wasn't her at all, it was my sandwich. And I knew it was in there. I knew it was back there and every time I'd feel so guilty. Um, eventually, I remember I, I like arranged life such that I could sneak out of the house and I went out there and I finally got it out and I threw it away and it felt amazing. It felt so good to get rid of that moldy, stinky sandwich that was hiding in my car. Now, we don't all hide moldy sandwiches, but sometimes when we're at school, we have things that are going on that we kind of want to hide. We want to, we, and we feel bad about them. And sometimes that's uh, things like, we might need help with something. We might need help with reading, or we might need help with uh, learning. Uh, we might need help with tests, or we might need help with anything. And I'm here to tell you that that's the whole point of school. The whole point of school is that you need help with stuff. Uh, and we're all here because we all need help with things. And we're all learning together. And I'm what's called a learning support teacher. Uh, you met Rebecca and, and some of her team as well. Our job is to support and to help students. Uh, and, and we love to do that. That's, that's why we come to work every day. Um, and so we ask you at Chinook that you become a, a person that doesn't hide what you need, but that you share what you need with people. Don't be like me and hide the sandwich. Just tell people. If you tell your teacher you're struggling, they'll help you or they'll hook you up with some more help. If you tell your parents that you need some help, they'll also hook you up with some help. Uh, if you talk to your advisor, which we have here, they can help you as well. Now parents, there's many ways that you can access help for your, your child while they're here. You can email teachers, you can phone the office, you can email me directly. Uh, often as we start working together, uh, we'll share uh, teams with people or uh, cell phones. Um, we do ask that you just always reach out. Don't hide your sandwiches. Don't let them go moldy. Uh, keep learning. Um, and yeah, we, we really just look forward to working with you while you're here. So thank you. Bill, back to you. I think you're on the next one, too. Huh. Which is what? What does high school look like now? <laughs> See, I need help. Is this my slide? You do such a good job at the stage, so. Okay, give, give me a sec. I have no idea what this slide even says. <laughs> oh, this one. Okay, I got this. All right, so uh, parents, when you went to high school, I'm assuming that most of you went to high school roughly when I was in high school. Um, yeah, we'll just say before the 2000s, right? In the 1900s, we went to high school. <laughs> And, like, it sounds old when I say it that way. The 1900s. Like, hey, students, we actually did have cars back then, because I hit my sandwich in one. Um, they might have had wood paneling on. But um, a lot has changed about school since then. Like, a lot. It, it looks similar. There's still desks, and there's still like, chairs and stuff, and there's hallways. Um, there's lockers. That, it, that looks the same, but the structure of school has actually changed quite a bit. Um, and so 
high school, for example, when we went through, there was only kind of one or two pathways through, and if that didn't fit for you, it was kind of like, eh, go find something else to do. That's not how it is. There are multiple pathways through high school now, like, like so many. Uh, there's the standard pathways, but there's a lot, but then there's ones that you can make up and choose uh, as you work with us as well. Um, so for example, when you get into high school, uh, you, you can still fail courses. Uh, and that, that's new for you. Uh, students, you won't have failed a course yet, uh, but in, in high school, grade 10 especially, not grade nine, um, but it happens. But there's ways to, to get around that still. Um, so for example, uh, we do something called retro credits, which sounds way cooler than, than maybe it is. Uh, it sounds retro, but um, it just means that you can still go on and if you can get credit for the next course, then you get credit for the course that you failed as well. And so there's innovative things like that. Um, Bill had mentioned some of the other uh, courses that support high school programming um, and, and like the world of work, the world of rap. Those things can, can help us to get through high school as well. Um, big word on, the, on that slide though that you need to know is flexibility. Uh, school is much more flexible now. The more you can voice your needs, uh, the more we can adapt programming to what you need. And uh, teachers and school staff are, are trained in this now. Um, like we spend most of our time trying to figure out ways to be flexible and ways to individualize the learning for students. Uh, but we need you to be partners in that and to help design programming with us. Uh, you're experts uh, in your children. Children, you're somewhat experts in yourselves and what you need. Uh, and so the more you can communicate with us and tell us what you need, the more we can adapt high school to what you need. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Now back to Bill. Thanks, Dave. So that is a very, very, very quick overview of, of a lot of the things that go on in the school. And, and of course, we don't expect, there's no test. You're not gonna come the first day, it's the first day you get back here and like, what did they say that day? Whole idea behind tonight is to give you a flavor of what Chinook is about. And so you heard some words that I do want you to take home. You heard Dave use the word flexible. Um, you heard me use the word learning. You saw in one of the pictures on one of the slides, you saw a picture of our stairway, and when you do the tour, I'll, I'll, here's your challenge, you have to count how many of these that there are out there. On every single stairway, you'll see, know your why, aim for growth, and take ownership. That is the enactment of, of Every decision we make is for learning and for the intellectual, spiritual, academic, physical growth of our students, like I was one there. But to do that, it's about knowing your why, aiming for growth, and taking ownership. And we're gonna help you do that over your four years here. That ownership piece and that growth piece are going to be those focuses in grade nine and will help, help get you into that. But come with that mindset, and that's the other one I want to, that Dwayne said, come with the mindset that you're gonna succeed and that this is going to be, and you will never hear me say, I want high school to be the best four years of your life. I actually hope it's not. You got a lot more life left after high school and I hope it only gets better for you. What I do want is high school to be the best next four years of your life and I want you to be able to look back and to go, yeah, I learned how to grow there. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about being a good human being. I learned a lot about academics. It set me up for what I wanted next in life, and I remember it fondly. And I remember the struggles, and I remembered how I got over them. That's what we at Chinook want for high school, for you to be successful. For the rest of the evening, so um, it is now all, it's about 10 to 7. I have some tour guides who are going to join us inside here for a second, just so you know who they are. If you would like a tour of the school, come on in guys. And you can just do a quick wave. We've got uh, Peyton and Tessa and Brody and Kaylee and Ellie and Vivian and Jade and uh, uh, Tyson and Austin. 
So they're all back there, and you can see they're all dressed very similarly in our black Chinook t-shirts. And they're going to be in groups just out in the lobby here. So after we're done here, um, please go, they're going to spread out, join one of the groups, and they'll take you through the school. We've opened up a lot of the doors so you can see some of the areas and get an idea of what the school looks like, because we know that's always a big thing. Um, and grade nines, when you come back later in June, we'll actually give you another tour, but hopefully by then we'll have your schedules and we'll be able to tell you specifically what, what, uh, what classes you're going to as well. So just more than one look is a good way to get to know the school. If you have any questions, they can answer some questions about the rooms and the programming there. Um, we'll be here, we'll be staying here if you have any specific questions you'd like to ask of Dwayne or I or Rebecca and Dave. And I think Dan is still here. And do we have any other staff in the audience? I thought I saw Deandra's here for a little while. Okay. Oh, okay. If there's other staff, they'll answer some questions too. But please, um, take a look around. Get to know the place, ask some questions just to get start to feel a little bit more comfortable with Chinook High School. And that's the first experience we want you to have here. So um, thanks again for showing up, so many of you. It's so nice to see this man. I think this might be the fullest this leader's been in a long time with people who aren't our students. So it's so nice to see you. I'll say it again, welcome to Chinook High School. And uh, tour guys, if you guys want to go spread out in the hallway so they are in the lobby there so people can find you. And then uh, we'll close off the evening with that. We'll see you for a bit. I should say, folks, if you don't want an official tour, feel free to wander around yourself, too. It's not that, it's hard to get lost. It's two very straight, long hallways. Ending the live stream, so your question's not live. <laughs> yeah.